I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be Young Lust, Love, or Delusion. When I was actually reading this particular guy's email, I, I couldn't help but laugh my fucking ass off at some of the things like – because he starts out – now, as I'm 45 years old and what, what just kind of struck me about it because obviously I have a little bit of perspective because I'm a little older than – I'm a little older and experienced I should say. And it just kind of reminds me of like how old people look at people who are younger than them or especially people who are really young that – because when you're young, you're a teenager, you think you fucking know everything and your parents don't know shit. Even when you're in your 20s, like, ugh, they don't know shit. And the funny thing is, is old people are going, <laughs> and, you know, and they say this to themselves inside and they just laugh because it's not until you get a little older, you get a little bit more experience. And so as like, this particular guy, I mean, he's young, he's obviously probably in his 20s, he has no experience. He, up until this particular girl, he never even kissed a girl before. He's he's a virgin, and yet so he says he's been following my work since like the end of last year, and that he's read my book three times. But he doesn't need to read it anymore because he feels he knows it well enough. And if this guy's been following me since late last year, like he claims to have, because there's also you'll see there's inconsistencies in his email so it sounds like part of what he's saying here is is bullshit because he's trying to puff himself up and stroke his own ego and make him look a little more successful and knowledgeable than he really is but the thing is is like I can see right through it and see what he's doing it's like I've done countless videos in that time where people are same attitude oh I don't need to read that fucking book 10 to 15 times I say right in a book it's like you you're going to get your balls crushed if you don't know the information so well. It's instinctive and this particular guy obviously has a long way to go before he really gets to know it well enough. And some of the things that he says he's doing, I mean it's just so blatantly obvious you, just, you have to laugh at it. So I'm going to do my best to contain myself and not bust his balls but this guy needs a little bit of a reality check and obviously that's what a coach does. I'm, you're able to see the things that the other person can't see. Once I was younger and inexperienced like this guy was and he seems to think he knows it all even though he hasn't even had sex yet. So I got a quote that I wrote and then we're going to go through his email. The quote says, life has an amazing way of giving us a reality check when we become too full of ourselves and our capabilities. It usually, it usually starts to happen when we have become too enamored with our own success, importance or value. It's always better to let other people sing your praises instead of trying to tell or convince others of your own greatness. All we really have control over in life is how we show up in each moment and the action we choose or don't choose to take. Success in getting from where you are right now to where you want to be is a result of continuous effort and action, not inflating your own ego or self-importance. If you become too full of your ego and self-pride, Life will inevitably serve you up a giant helping of humble pie. For those of you who have been following for a while, I've had plenty of humble pie in my lifetime. And those things always teach, teach you lessons. It's always better to say, you know what, maybe I should listen to what this other person has to say and kind of take it on board instead of just dismissing it outright. So he says, hey, Corey, I've been following your videos since late last year and I've even purchased your book. I read it three times. I know 15 times, but I feel I already know enough from it. Come on, dude. You are totally fucking deluding yourself. And some guys, that's part of the story they tell themselves. Oh, I don't need to read because they just don't want to do the work. I know it well enough. I don't need to know this. I don't need to read it 10, 15 times. I'm the shit. I, I, what does that fucking shaved head motherfucker know? I'm young. I... I'm part of the millennials. I'm one of the millennials. I don't, I don't need to listen to a schmuck that grew up in the 80s. So he says, my situation is that I met this really beautiful girl late last February and we met through a Facebook group. However, one week afterwards, we managed to meet in real life. We're both in our mid-20s, virgins, and had not even had our first kiss yet. Yeah, he doesn't need to read the book three, 15 times. A guy didn't have any had his first kiss, virgin. 
but he knows better. On the date, <laughs> on the date, she leaned in to kiss me on the cheek. I playfully turned towards her and kissed her on the lips. Well, that was a good move. Good job there. She blushed a little, but we kissed a few more times afterwards. We didn't have sex, but that's okay. We want to save it for the right one. I used to think that way when I was younger and then finally by the time I got to be 21, I was just like, fuck it. I was just being razzed so much by my friends and I'd been disappointed so many times by women that I was thought I was in love with and it's just a fantasy. You see countless movies and it's like you got to be with the one, this one perfect person and you share yourself with them and there's going to be skyrockets and fireworks and all kinds of amazing stuff going out and there'll be harps and there'll be cellos and... There'll be this just great orchestra playing this love song and it'll just be fucking awesome. But that's just a fantasy that's perpetuated by movies and TV and Hollywood. And the scripts are usually written by people that aren't very successful with members of the opposite sex. A week after, she called me. I asked if she liked that last date. That really sounds like somebody who's really confident, doesn't it? And she said yes. Remember, he doesn't need to read anymore three times. I asked her if she liked the last date. Can you imagine James Bond saying something like that? Um, did you have a good time? Uh... And she said yes. So I said another date. This one was three months away. You start talking to her on Facebook and you meet within a week and but yet you gotta wait three months to have a second date? Well, let's see the reason why he wanted to wait three months. He says, I know, too long. This was supposed to be in my birthday and I even spent two months planning everything. But as my birthday came, she put it off because she was feeling pressured by my planning. So he's planning this fucking grand gesture second date, this ultimate second date where the fireworks are going to go off and the orchestra is going to play and it's just going to be amazing. And he's telling her about all this stuff. So he's getting all wound up in this fantasy. He's been out on one day with her. One. This is the first girl he's ever kissed. And he's thinking, love story. This is like I saw in the movies. We're going to be together forever. We're going to be like 150 years old when we finally pass away and we're going to die within minutes of each other. I mean, all this thing, you can tell her. You just see the stuff that this guy's probably thinking or it's going on in his mind. I used to think this way when I was a teenager and I was in my early 20s. And then I got a dose of reality. My friends are getting laid and getting experience and I had like no experience. I was like, no, I'm going to hold out for the fantasy. And finally I got tired of all the razzing and getting my balls busted. You know, it's a good thing I did because it really helped my confidence getting laid for the first time. And I didn't feel so bad anymore. And it was just got rid of the stigma. I wasn't getting my balls busted all the time. And I just formed, felt more easy, felt more relaxed. And I was like, boy, I got that off. Got off, that off my plate because repetition is a mother of skill. Even if you're fumbling through it, you get, you're going to figure it out one way or another. So he says, two weeks after my birthday, we had no contact as I was still pretty mad at her for putting it off. Well, you basically talked her out of it because you should have been hanging out and having fun and hooking up instead of thinking, oh, I got to wait to see her for three months and then we're going to have this ultimate date. He's going through all his planning. He's telling her all these great things he's going to do in the date and she's thinking, I don't want to live up to this guy's unreasonable expectations. What if he doesn't like me? What if the sex isn't very good? What, what if we don't click? He's had one date, remember? And she sent me a message on Facebook asking if my birthday went okay and notice what he says next. I said, it would have been better if I was with you but I made the best of the situation. In other words, I was just emotionally torn up. I've been planning this fucking grand gesture date for three months and then you ditch me. And so my whole birthday sucked because you weren't there. Dude, you had one date with her and you're trying to treat her like she's your fucking wife and didn't come to your birthday party or something. You haven't even spent enough time with this girl to know whether or not you even like her. And talking on the phone or through Skype, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Three months, it's ridiculous. I mean, you met within a week after your first date. 
Remember, he doesn't need to re read the book any more than three times because he's got this. A few hours later, she called me again and we started talking. The next day, I asked if she wanted to hang out with me on Monday because I had business near her city. She agreed to go on another date with me and we just had a picnic. A man's job is to create an opportunity for sex to happen. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. But it sounds like they just had a nice picnic during the middle of the day, a nice little cute lunch date because he's got to be Mr. Nice Guy and Mr. Respectful. And she's probably she, – we want to be in a love story. And so she's going to share herself with a guy. She wants a guy that knows what to do, not a guy who's going to try to convince her for six months or a year or two why he's the right girl to share a Virginia with. By the time he finally gets around to doing it, she's already had sex with two or three other guys. I mean you like her, she likes you. Get together. Period. End of story. The more you talk about it, the less the likelihood is that it's actually going to happen. Later that night after I got home, we had a fight. So you've had two dates and now you're already fighting with her. You're arguing with her. Remember, he's already read the book three times. He doesn't need to know anymore. He's got this. You're arguing with a woman. So obviously, why do you think he's arguing? Because she probably didn't meet his unreasonable expectations. Remember, he's expecting an orchestra. He's expecting fireworks, the kind of shit you see in movies. And it's not happening. She's just totally fucking up his fantasy. She told me she'd put up a wall. And this time it is impossible to break through. Knowing that this is the end, I just said all that I had to say to her. She wants to know why I love her. Two dates. And you're in love. Oh, you must have been fucking just bleh, vomiting all your feelings on her too. And how long I can love her. I simply replied that we stopped talking three months ago and I still loved you the same as the day I met you. Something – there's some inconsistency there. I don't know what really happened because it makes it sound like they were in constant contact with one another. But they stopped talking three months ago. But I don't know. He's puffing himself up. It's like the gorilla. Ooh. So if this is not love, I don't know what it is. You actually said that to her, dude? So if this is not love, I don't know what it is. Dude. You don't know what love is. You don't even have a clue. This is the first girl you kiss. You've been on two dates with her and yet you're in love. He wants the orchestra and the fireworks. Well, it's not happening, bro. It puts a lot of – hang out, have fun, hook up. It's like you supposedly have been watching me since last year before you even met this girl and you supposedly have read the book three times. But you don't need to read anymore because you're an expert already and yet you're doing the exact opposite of everything I teach. And what did she do? She canceled on you. She had been very confrontational with me every time we talked. So this time I went on the offensive. Oh, men who argue with women don't understand them. But yet he's read the book three times and he's got it all figured out. She said that even her closest friends don't know her very well. And I made a bold move. He put some bold letters by saying I can read her like a book. Oh, dude, you are so full of yourself. She even tested me to see if I was being serious. Right afterwards, she opened the gate to her mighty wall, and I simply walked right inside without a battle. She started using emoticons in her text after four months. Ooh, emoticons. Must mean real true love now. Create an opportunity for sex to happen. Hang out, have fun, hook up. This guy's been obsessing over this girl for four months. Like, keep in mind, he supposedly didn't talk to her for three months. So it's a little weird, a little creepy when you act this way. And that's why women just will blow you off and go look for especially an older guy that's experienced, that knows how to create the love story without all this bullshit drama or giving her a hard time because she's not behaving the way he expects her to in his little fantasy. I feel she's trying to open up to me again because she's at least talking to me and telling me about her personal life. Oh, since our little chat the other night, she's been telling me every day about the, all the quality guys that tried to get with her, but she's been reject rejecting everyone. 
She posted on her Facebook that she wouldn't consider dating a guy who flirts with girls. I know this was directed at me. You're assuming it's directed at you. I called her a little later and she posted that and said, and I don't flirt, I tease playfully. She laughed. Is this going anywhere? What should I be doing right now? You're, you're asking me for my opinion? You read the book three whole times. You, you, you should be telling me what, what you should be doing because you're an expert, right? Is this going anywhere? What should I be doing right now? Dude, make a fucking date. You're literally doing everything you can to totally sabotage. It's like you were supposed to read the book three times but you're, you're doing the exact opposite of it. And you're like perplexed that you're not being successful. What do you expect, dude? It's like as a coach, I mean you got to participate in your own rescue. All I can do is suggest but if you want to just dismiss everything like I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about and then you get to the end of this email where you've puffed yourself up like you're the fucking alpha male stud – and you don't need to read the book because the rules don't apply to you but yet you're not getting the results you want. I mean you got to participate in your own rescue and if you're not willing to take on anything on board that I'm saying, it's like you, you might as well turn the video off right now and th throw the book in the fireplace. It, you know, At least maybe it will keep you warm for a little bit. But if you're serious about this and you really want to get this part of your life handled and you want things to be easy and effortless, you'll read the book 10 to 15 times. You download the Kindle app, and so you have it in your cell phone. So every spare minute, you're taking your dropping a deuce in the morning. We flip through a few pages on your smartphone. Every chance you get, you should be absorbing this information. You should be meeting other women. You should be going out on dates with other women, instead of putting all your eggs in one basket. Because the bottom line is repetition is another skill. The only way you're going to get better is to practice the things that I teach. And you're not really practicing. You've been out on two dates with this girl. In four months, so you've been following my work since December, and right now, time this is in June. So you're, we're talking seven months here, and you've been out on two dates in seven months with one girl. So your game is not getting any better, and plus, on top of that, you're refusing to learn the fundamentals because you don't think you need to read the book ten to fifteen times. So you should be reading the book ten to fifteen times, getting to know it so well you have to think about it. And when she reaches out, assume she wants to see you and make a date. Either you go to her city or she comes to yours. It's that simple. And if she's too busy to come to your city or she's too busy to make time to see you, that's why you should be dating other women. You should ask out 100 different women over the next 30 days because that will be enlightening for you. Keep a log of it. You've got to practice this stuff. You've got to get better instead of trying to make this one girl into the ultimate fantasy – and have the ultimate date and she's going to be the last woman you're ever going to talk to or go out on dates with. It's, you're just being delusional. You're a little full of yourself. You're a little bit in your piddly little ego thinking you're a Mr. Important when in reality, this girl, obviously she was digging you. She liked you and you're literally talking her out of liking you by doing the exact opposite of what I teach. Hang out. Have fun. Hook up. That's what you should be doing. Create an opportunity for sex to happen. Have a date in the evening. Not be going to lunches or picnics or holding back kissing because you're trying to be Mr. Respectful. She wants a guy that knows what he's doing. And the more you interact with her, the more you're communicating that you really don't have an idea what you're doing. And eventually, some other guy is going to come along and take her right off your hands because she's going to get tired of waiting for you to grow the fuck up. Sad if it, you know, if any of this offends you, sorry, not really, but I'm not here to blow sunshine up your ass. It's like the email you wrote, it, it, I'm sorry, dude, it's fucking ridiculous. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.